Sometimes, when you're making a game, you're going to need to know how to sort nested arrays. For example, maybe your inventory is an array of arrays or even an array of structs, and you want to be able to sort it by the item's name or the amount of those items where that is a value held by the nested array or struct. Or maybe you want to sort a list of values by a custom level. For example, you want to sort by custom rarity levels such as common, uncommon, and rare. GameMaker Studio 2.31 provided us with a built-in array sort function, which has some basic sort functionality, such as the ability to sort numbers in ascending or descending order, or strings in alphabetical order, but more importantly, it allows you to give it a custom sort function, a function that you write and then pass into the array sort function that determines how your array will be sorted. Hello everyone, my name is Sam Spade, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through how to write these custom functions so that you can sort your arrays however you want. Two things I want to say though before we start. First, this only works in GameMaker Studio 2.31. You won't be able to follow along with prior versions of GameMaker because they didn't have this functionality. Second, I'm going to be using things like arrays, structs, static variables, and anonymous functions without really explaining these things in depth. But if you want to know more about them, I will have tutorial links available at the end of this video. To write a custom sort function, you want to remember three things. First, you must write the custom function yourself. Second, that custom function always takes two arguments, and those two arguments will always be two values from your array. Third, your custom function needs to return a number. If the number it returns is negative, the first of the two values that get passed in will be pushed towards the start of the array. And if it is positive, the first of the two values will be pushed towards the end of the array. And that's really it. So let's switch over to GameMaker Studio. So here we are. I've created a simple inventory for this example. We have a constructor function, which will make us an item. It takes in a name, a cost, a rarity, and whether or not that item is equipped. And then I have the inventory itself, which is an array, of course, because that's what we're going to sort. And I'm just putting a number of items into it. Now I'm gonna go through three different sorting functions. These functions can be anonymous functions, which I'll cover down here. They can also be method variables, or they could be script functions put inside of a script asset. Just so all of our code is in one place, I've created some functions as method variables. Each custom function takes two arguments. These arguments are going to be two elements from your array. First, we're gonna sort by cost. Our cost sort function is very, very straightforward. We just say a.cost, minus b dot cost. Remember that cost is the variable in the item struct that holds the cost value. So 100, 200, 1000, 50, 50, and zero. I'm sure everyone can do math, but obviously if a's cost is a higher number, then saying a minus b will equal a positive number, and that will push a towards the end of the array. If a and b are equal, this will be zero. They'll stay in the same place. And if a is less than b, then A's cost minus B's cost will be a negative number, and A will be pushed towards the start of the array. If instead of nested structs, these were nested arrays, you would simply reference the position in the array rather than referencing them as structs. Now we have another function, the equipped sort. This will sort our array based upon whether an item is marked as equipped or not. It takes two arguments, as always, and here you can see it's a little bit different. We're running it through an if, else if, else statement. If A equipped and B equipped are equal, then there doesn't need to be a change, so we'll return zero. If they're not equal, then we know that one of them must be equipped and the other one is not equipped. But we can just say if A is equipped, then return one. This will push equipped items towards the end of the array. And if A is not equipped, then that means B is equipped and we will return negative one, which again pushes the A element towards the start of the array. Finally, we have a rarity sort. Now, we could of course sort rarity in the same way that we sorted equipped. We have three options, common, uncommon, rare. But we could create an if, else, if, else statement to do the same thing. But the more rarity levels you add, the more unwieldy that will be. So I wanted to show you a quick trick that you can use to make this simpler. We can create a static variable, rarity value, that is a struct. Then we can simply use the variable names and make sure they're the same as the string name for our item's rarity. So common, uncommon, and rare. So we can create this static rarity value chart, essentially. And now we can do the same thing that we did with cost, where we use the rarity of the struct and the struct accessor to look up its value in this struct. And then we can do the mathematical operation. If A is a higher rarity than B, then this number will be higher than this number, and it will return a positive value, pushing higher rarity items to the end of the array and lower rarity items to the start. 
After writing these functions, all we need to do is call array sort, which again is a new built-in function in GameMaker Studio 2.31 on our inventory array, then pass in the function as the argument. Let's actually run this and see it in action. All right, here we are. We've stopped on our breakpoint. We can check our inventory over here. We can see that it is an array full of structs. So this is our sword. Rarity is common. It's not equipped. And currently, these are all in the order that the inventory was initialized in. So let's sort it by cost. Now you can see that map, which is the cheapest, is at the start. Then we have our 50 cost, 50 cost, and we can come all the way down to the end, which is our rare magical sword at a cost of 1,000. Now we can sort by whether or not an item is equipped. So the final three items should all be equipped. So that's our belt, that's our magical sword, and that's our shield. And finally, we'll sort by rarity. So we have our common items at the start, and then we have our most rare items at the end. So everything we just went over was with these pre-made functions where we created the function and we saved it to a variable using method variables here. It would work just as well if these were pre-made script functions. However, you can also pass in anonymous functions. Again, I'm not going to explain anonymous functions here, but there will be a link at the end of this video. But you can see that we can pass in the function like this where we are creating the function as we're passing it in. This would yield the same result as the cost sort, and this would yield the same result as the rarity sort. This can be very useful when you want to sort an array with a custom function that you're not gonna use anywhere else. So there you go. Now you can sort your arrays however you want. And if you want to learn more about arrays, structs, static variables, or anonymous functions, check out these video links.